Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, we will learn how to connect the modern table control with the modern form control to allow the end users to go back and forth between these two experiences to create, read and update data. We will also see how to update data in bulk, handle complex type columns like the person column and the form experience and a lot more. So let's check this video out in action. Let's begin creating our Power App from scratch. In make.powerapps.com, head over to create. I'll start with a blank canvas app. The form factor, I'll pick tablet. Let's connect to any data source of our choice. For the demo purpose, I'll pick SharePoint. I have a list in SharePoint called Work Tracker. This list has various types of columns, text, lookup, choice, number, currency, and more. Table control. To leverage modern controls, we need to ensure that under app settings, updates, modern controls and themes is turned on. Instead of creating my screen from scratch and adding the modern table control to showcase the data from that SharePoint list, we can leverage a screen template that has been provided for us. The template is called header and table. I'll select. It creates a screen using responsive container controls. And in the main container is the modern table control. This I will connect to my data source that's connected on the Power App called Work Tracker. Notice how the table control displays data from the various column types. I have the flexibility here to pick which fields I would like to display in the table control and in which order. The user can select an item in the table control. On select of the item, I would like to redirect the user to a form screen that will allow me to modify the data for the selected item in the table control. So at this point, I'll be connecting the table control to a form control. Let's build a screen that has the form control. Once again, rather than starting from scratch, we have a screen template called header and form. The screen uses responsive container controls. In the form container, here is the form that I can connect to my data source. The form will showcase the fields from my data source. Each data card is a field. The control that it leverages has a direct correlation with the data type of my field in my data source. Here as well, I have the option to select which fields I would like to display to the user and in which order. I can also decide the layout of the form control. Here I would like to show fields in a two column layout in the form control. The form controls default mode, I will change to edit, meaning by default, the form will be editable for an item. That item needs to come from my table control. To create that connection, the form control has a property called item. This I will set as my table control dot selected back to my table control. When the user selects a row, I would like to redirect the user to my form screen. For that, the table control has an action called on select. On select, I will navigate the user to my form screen. Let's preview. I select an item, navigates the user to the form screen and shows the data for that selected row in the table control. 
There is a button at the bottom called cancel. When this is clicked, it simply resets the form. And there is a button called submit. When this is clicked, it submits the form and then it resets. Let's make a change here. We'll only submit the form when submit is clicked. This will submit the data in the form control to the data source. And if that happens successfully, then I would like to take the user back to the table screen. The form control has a property called on success. On success, navigate the user to the table screen. I also want to add an option for the user to go back to the table screen. So in the button container, in this, I will insert a button. I will move this button to the start, meaning to the left. The text for this button, I'll say back. On select of this button, I'll use the function back. Preview, click back. It takes me back to the table screen. But if you notice, it took me back there and it jumped back to the form screen. Why? Well, the reason is because the table control maintains its selection when I go back. So it triggers the on select property of that table control each time I click back. So what I can do here is I'll go to data and simply refresh the data source. So basically at this point, if I go back to the table screen, it won't redirect because the data source refreshed, the table refreshed, so that selection went away. Every time the user comes back to the home screen, I do not want that selection to be maintained. How do we do this? Table screen on visible. I'll set a variable called where reset to true. In the form screen, we have a property called on hidden. On hidden means once the user moves out of the form screen, right before doing that, I'll set that variable to false and set that variable to true. The variable value is changing. I will now use this variable to filter the items property of the table control. Filter my table control on where reset. If you have other filter conditions, you simply add an AND operator with this variable. I'll select an item, shows me the data. Back, you see the table control reset. So that selection goes away. The on select function doesn't get called, it doesn't navigate away. Now the user can select another item and then it takes the user to the form screen. In the form screen, here I have a single select person column. Notice assign to says inject zero. If I select this data card, within this is a combo box. This combo box, you go to fields, edit, add a field, and you can pick one property from the person type column that you would like to display here. I'll pick the display name. So now notice it shows the display name of the user to whom the task is assigned. What if I want to change this? Let's search for users in my active directory. It doesn't show me all the users. To do this, data, add, connect to the Office 365 users connector. For the combo boxes items property, change this as follows. To make a change, we have to ensure we unlock the data card. So we can change the items property of the combo box to Office 365 users dot search user v2. The search term will be self dot search text comma load the top 800 users based on the search term entered dot 
value. For the data card, default property. This I will change as follows. Once again, office 365 users dot search user v2. The search term here will be this item dot my person type column, which is assigned to dot email. Get the top one result. From this, get the value. Even though I said one result, this function will return tabular data. I only need the first record. So I'll use the formula first. Notice the value, the V became capital. Make sure this is all lowercase. This data card has a property called update. Let's change this as follows. If data card dot selected dot, let's say ID, if that is not equal to blank, meaning there is a user that has been selected, in that case, go and apply the following formula, else you set it as blank. Let's preview. Assign to I change to Reza for this item. Submit. Updated. Let's pick this item. Assign to. I'll make it empty. Submit. Assign to for this item is blank. In the table screen, let's add a button. When the user selects this, I want to take the user to the form screen but allow the user to create a new item. To do that, on select of this button, I'll first use the formula new form, put the name of my form control. So this will set the mode of the form to new and then navigate the user to the form screen. I'm changing the form mode. I should be doing the same on select of the table control. Right before navigating the user, I will use the edit form function to change the mode of the form to edit before navigating the user. New is clicked. It's a brand new form experience. If I select an existing item, this will show me the data relative to that item. The table control has a behavior property called enable multi-select. By default, this is no. If this is yes, the user can select multiple items. There'll be checkboxes for the user to make those selections. I would like to allow the user to decide whether they want to select a specific item, go to the form and make modifications, or they can go in bulk update mode, pick items and modify certain fields that I allow them to update. I'll go and insert another button. On select of this button, I'll set a variable called where enable multi to not of where enable multi. If I click this button, this variable is true. If I click it, it turns false. For the text property of the button, if where enable multi, if this is true, then I'll say disable multi select, else I will say enable multi select. So notice as I click, it changes the text. Table controls enable multi selection property, I'll set as follows. If where enable multi, if that's true, yes, else, no. Let's try this. Enable, there we go. Disable. Now, when it's enabled, and if the user starts selecting items, our on select code is getting called, so it's navigating the user out, which is a problem. I do not want to navigate the user in case of multi selection. So for that, on select function of the table control, if 
not of where select multi only then execute all that code now it won't redirect in case of multi selections but if i disable this and select now it will redirect to the form screen now when the user selects multiple items i would like to allow the user to change the priority for this in the main screen container i'll go and insert another horizontal container move it above the table control turn off flexible height and give it a defined height of let's say 60 this container should be visible only when count rows of my table control dot selected items is greater than one in this container i'll insert a text label i'll call this priority then insert a drop down control drop down controls items property will come from my sharepoint list choice column values so choices of my data source dot the name of my choice column which is priority so this will load the choices and then in this container i'll insert a button for the user to perform the updates when this button is clicked i'll create a collection using the function clear collect i'll call it call data my table control dot selected items are loaded in this collection then i'll use the formula update if to update the data in this collection criteria is true meaning update all the items that are loaded in the collection and here go and update the priority to that drop down control that i added for priority dot selected and then go and patch my data source with this collection single query will update all the records in one go and once this is done go and update that variable to false let's try this enable multi select i'll pick the first three items notice the moment i pick my second selection this container becomes visible let's change the priority of all of these items to low update in one go all the three are updated if you enjoyed this video then do like comment and subscribe to my youtube channel and thank you so much for watching